Current guidelines and expert consensus documents, they strongly support use of multiple medical therapies for patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Um, the rationale is that there's multiple landmark clinical trials testing these therapies. All have shown these therapies to substantially decrease rates of mortality, hospitalization, and improve overall quality of life. Now, these guidelines also recommend that patients aren't just treated with these medicines, but that they're titrated to the target dose of these medications as tolerated. And those target doses are derived from those landmark clinical trials. Now, our group has shown that in contemporary US clinical practice, in general, there's a substantial number of patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction that are eligible for these medical therapies that aren't receiving them. And we've also shown that there are many patients that are on these therapies, but they're only on very low doses of them. One of the, th the three things we really wanted to explore in this um, analysis were to assess to what degree medication changes occur over time in a contemporary U.S. population of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, and then to understand the barriers um, to what might be preventing these favorable medication changes like increasing towards target doses and what might be the reasons for having medications discontinued or doses decreased. CHAMP-HF is an outpatient registry of U.S. patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Um, it is um, representative of U.S. clinical practice and in this, the thing with the CHAMP that is um, makes it a very um, unique data source is that there's longitudinal data capture on medication use and dosing over time. So utilizing this unique feature of CHAMP, we engineered this analysis to look at patterns of medication use over time. So in the current study, we included over 2,500 heart failure with reduced ejection fraction patients from the US, and patients had to have complete medication data at baseline and at 12-month follow-up, and they had to be eligible for the cornerstone heart failure therapies at baseline and at 12 months. We looked at the four cornerstone heart failure with reduced ejection fraction evidence-based therapies, ACE or ARB, ARNI, beta blocker therapy, and MRA or mineral corticoid receptor antagonist. And then with, those, with each of those therapies, we wanted to assess what was the pattern of the medication change. So we for each medication, we divided patients into four groups. We divided them into people who are on stable sub-target doses of these drugs or on no dose at all, patients that were on stable target doses of the drug, patients that had up titration or a new initiation of the therapy, or the fourth group was patients that had discontinuation or a dose decrease. We saw that the, of the percent total population who are on target doses of these therapies at baseline, it was anywhere from 1% to 2% for ARNI therapy to as maximum as 25% for um, MRA therapy. So generally, very, very low proportions of patients for all these therapies were on target doses at baseline. And then the, these proportions increased very minimally over 12-month follow-up. So, there, so again, reinforcing that there's substantial gaps in the use but also the target dosing of these therapies and that even when we follow these patients over time, minimal improvement is, is made. We also saw that there was multiple clinical factors that were associated with favorable or unfavorable medication changes over time. There are several themes that emerged with looking at those factors, but one that was um, most notable was that paradoxically, many high-risk patient characteristics were actually associated with dosing decreases or discontinuation of therapy. So for example, patients with a prior heart failure hospitalization, impaired quality of life, um, severe functional class, those patients that are high risk, those features were actually associated with um, withdrawal of therapy over the 12 month time period. Lastly, we also looked at the reasons underlying these different medication changes for each of the four mainstay therapies. For all therapies, we saw that medical reasons were the most common reasons for medication changes, but there was a um, variable contribution from other sets of reasons like patient preference, health team reasons, essentially a clinician preference, 
or systems-based barriers like insurer-initiated insure changes or formulary changes. Given that heart failure remains a leading cause of death, hospitalizations, and impaired quality of life, we know that every effort must be made to use all the tools proven to improve patient outcomes. And that includes, when we're seeing these patients in clinic, making every possible effort to escalate heart failure therapy as tolerated.